Welcome back to the Bitter Betty podcast. I'm Bitter Betty Deadhead here with my two cohorts. Bitter Betty Tova. And Bitter Betty Carol with an E. Hey guys, so we're back. Um, this is something a little different. We've been discussing behind the scenes about uh, hip hop and we've talked to a few of our other reactor friends and we decided that we wanted to do a little history lesson for ourselves and mm -hmm. we thought we would record it on a little bit about hip hop. So we hope you guys enjoy this. You ladies got anything to say? Add? Well, yeah, in particular, like we were having a conversation um, with uh, some other reactors um, in the in the reaction community. Um, and I've always liked hip hop, but never really had an understanding of like the actual hip hop culture itself, right? I've always just, I like the music, so I listen to the song. It has a good vibe I can vibe along with. Like I like a lot of rap music, but I don't understand a whole lot of when somebody says, like I understand more now, like when someone says a bar, right? But I want, mm -hmm. but what makes it a bar? What What is different? A cadence or like I understand flow like as in like but I want to know the technical components behind like what's actually happening in hip-hop so um and yeah. then how you put together a hip-hop song because I like the genre so much that I figure you know what even though I'm 46 years old maybe it's time to understand a little more about the music that I actually love so much so yeah absolutely yeah, and I love that we're kind of starting with like the birth of hip hop, like the history of it, where it comes from, and then kind of a dive deep and uh, deep dive into, you know, what hip hop culture really is all about. And I think you know when you have an understanding for it, you have a better appreciation for it, and you know the more you know. So yeah. I'm excited for this. I am yeah. too. Y'all ready? Yeah, let's absolutely. Do it. In August 1973, a young Jamaican-born New Yorker known as DJ Coolheart threw a party in the South Bronx. With a pair of turntables, he improvised a technique that isolated and re repeated musical breaks and repeated musical breaks. That technique would lay the foundation for a genre known as hip-hop. Hip-hop music emerged from house parties in the Bronx and spread like wildfire between friends and neighbors at block parties. The new sound was electrifying in the schoolyard during recess, someone would have a boom box. And then someone would start rhyming. You didn't have recorded versions of hip hop at that time. Within a few years, it had become an underground cultural movement and its distribution was homemade. You couldn't purchase albums or records and you couldn't hear hip hop on the radio. The only way that you could participate in the culture musically was through these cassette tapes, which would circulate all throughout the city. As its influence deepened and broadened, the music spread from the underground onto the radio. In 1979, a group from suburban New Jersey released Rapper's Delight, one of the first yes. hip-hop records. The boogie to the boogie to the beat. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. I remember that. And me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. And the Sugar Hill Gang's hit was just the beginning. As hip-hop yeah, yeah. evolved, it became a passion shared by millions of young Americans who used it to articulate their identity and their politics, creating a vibrant multicultural community across the country. Our generation of young people, we had to find new ways nice. to communicate, you nice. know, just getting yeah. on the records and speaking about the truth. Its lyrics reflected the social and economic conditions of the inner cities as seen through the eyes of the people who lived there. Don't push me, cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. So what? Uh, it's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. I think it was Chuck D who said, you know, it's the CNN of the black community. It's actually reporting on all of these things that we've experienced in poetry form and musical form. In 2017, wow, sure hip-hop surpassed rock as America's number one stream genre for the first time ever. Decades after its birth, hip-hop has grown from its underground origins in the Bronx to become one of the most popular genres of music is that P. throughout the world. Is that Jay-Z? Why that he is, so young? Yeah. So young and so little. The baby Jay-Z. 
Okay. So I now I have more questions. <laughs> me too. More questions than answers. Me too. All that did was confuse me more. So, <laughs> but I like, enjoyed it. I, I did really, yeah. really enjoy it. I, I well, not not over. really confuse me, but like <laughs> now I want to know more, right? Like I right. want to know more. Like okay, so like, like when did the shift in the culture start to change with the music? Like it sounded like, like you said, it was a CNN of the community of the black community, and so it was speaking. It sounded like it was speaking on real things, like real things. So when did it start being about? guns and drugs and gang banging and lots of genitals genitals flying around all the time <laughs> smacking me in the face every time i listen to hip-hop these days Even 11 inches booty holes the jj's <laughs> weenuses they're everywhere boobies just everywhere when you said boobies that reminded me of red and carol going boobies. what's she putting the, what's she putting her boobies in my red face <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly exactly it's just there's, uh, you know, yeah, but uh, really, I want to know when it changed from being about like informing people, fighting the power, like right, fighting like, the right, power. Right, yes, that's exactly like literally what you said. said. That yes. to be like to being, you know, like to not not doing that anymore. I mean, it's not saying that that's not saying that there aren't con like uh, conscious rappers out there who aren't trying to fight the power, but that's not the mainstream anymore. That was mainstream mainstream for them at the time, like even though it was yeah. underground, you know, it was. So like the, my question is, you know, so when did they stop talking about shit that matter? Is it because the labels got so involved with it? Labels hijacked that shit and turned it into some marketing ploy to sell sex Probably. and drugs and alcohol to kids Probably. and, and everybody else who actually is putting out real music that matters, that has substance has just been thrown to the side, you know, <laughs> because that's not, you know, marketable or whatever. And I mean, I don't know. I have, it's just, I have so many more questions. So many a, more questions. I have a theory. Go ahead. What's your theory? And it's not just about hip hop. It's about everything. That they're just trying to find a way to kill us off quicker. The the poor, the whatever, you know, the people who don't really, you know, just not. Maybe. Not just, I mean. But it, it's not just with music. It's with, like, what you eat, your food, everything, like. Yeah, well, it's it, like it came. It, I mean, it, all those things definitely, definitely will kill you. Uh, but it's like it became about making money for all these big names, right? Like you wear the designer clothes, so they sell the designer clothes. You drive the fancy cars, so people buy the fancy cars. You you do the drugs, you you drink the alcohol, and you know it's all about sponsors and people that are putting money into you and what is going to sell. And if people are putting all this money into you and you're not delivering, then you get thrown to the side like they did with Nova. And then mm -hmm. you don't find out you're not signed anymore until they stop paying your rent. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you don't own any of your masters, right? They have control of all your masters. The label has control of all the masters. Um, and so they're the ones making the money even after, like, if they drop you and stuff, they still own those masters. You still can't do anything. You cannot monetize off your own music because they own the masters to it. They own the copyright. You know what I mean? That's why owning your own master is so important because it's everything that's owning your craft. So these labels took over, they jacked this amazing genre and made it into a money, a money maker. Like it went from fighting the power to how much power can you provide me with? Right. Yes. I, I, I agree with all that. Um, especially when it comes to the shift and when did that actually happen and why did it happen? Um, right. And you know, and that takeover kind of happened because it sounds to me by watching this video, you know, it was something that was developed in this underground and it was this specific yeah. culture that was developed, you know, um, and he even mentioned like a type of politics. So I got like, yeah. what kind of politics are referring to, right? Like, because you could have politics within music, you can have politics like within the world, like what kind of politics are we referring yeah. to? Like, and, and yeah. my thing is wanting to understand the actual culture behind it, right? Mm -hmm. Like the actual hip hop culture. And then I want to understand. And so if anybody's watching this and could lead me to a video that would help me understand like the actual development of the culture itself, like what makes hip hop this culture, right? Yeah. Like I, I want those answers. Like what makes it this culture? Like yeah. it can't be because it just is. Okay. But what is it about like, yeah. what is 
makes it the like this a culture. Yeah. Like how and did then, it develop? You know, correct. it went from it went from so uh, you know this guy started on the turntables and he layered yes. beats and he you know would would make them all over. So he created beats, right? He basically right. formula had the formula for making beats that you could rhythmically speak on. Um, right. And you're right. And I would love to know how how somebody came up with like I'm gonna start I'm gonna start like rhythmically talking over this track uh, in order to like get this point across. So I you know like I don't know that's interesting to me too. I could go down rabbit holes all day long. Um, right. You know, but I like I want to know too like how 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 the writing process of hip hop and rap yes. kind of started yes. too yes. because like I I listened to rap growing up. I have been immersed in like I would say hip hop culture in a sense without almost even, I guess, knowing it or necessarily understanding Same. it. I'm listening now that I've been exposed to so much rap and I've, I've learned about bars and multi-syllable rhyming and breath control and all these crazy things that, you know, I didn't even think about before I'm listening back to songs and I'm like, Oh shit, that's what he meant by that. Like it didn't make sense until now. So now I want to know like how people, how do you figure out like how to rhyme syllables together and like put it all together and, uh, like just the whole price process to me of creating is so interesting. Yes. And that's, that's exactly so. what I like the, the purpose of, you know, our conversation yeah. that was even sparked, you know, is right. okay. But how, right. Cause it was a very specific question yeah. that was, that was, that was going on in, in, in our conversation. And then yeah. I was like, okay, but what do you mean by that? Like, right. what, what do you mean by storytelling? Right? Like, yeah. what does that actually mean? Right? right? Because anybody to me that's a, that would be like a lyricist, right? Yeah. Means that they have some kind of storyline and that you can follow yeah. within the song, right? To me, yeah. like that's what makes somebody more of a lyricist rather than like somebody that's just like um, into like the, the trap music or like, right. you know, your simple mumble rap, whatever it might be. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> which I like all those genres, by the way, just saying, like all those little splits yeah. off of hip hop guys. But like, <clears throat> I just want to understand, I, I want to know the differences when I hear somebody say that or when I hear a song, I want to be able to interpret like, oh, well, this is somebody that has great lyricism. This is somebody that's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to be able to yeah. know those things. So if anybody has any good videos, if you have any good comments, mm -hmm. like that, you know, could lead me to another rabbit hole to look down, I would yeah. love that because I love to review music, right? That's what we do a lot. We do a lot of review, like reactions to music. So it would help me when I'm, yeah, I would, like, I, yes, but yes, exactly. But like, I can, like, I can definitely identify a good punchline, right? Like anybody, right, like, oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. you identify the punchline, but I want to be able to identify like, you know, um, double and triple, you know, entendres. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. right. I want to understand like what yeah. that means, right? Because I understand like the concept of like w what they're talking about. Like if it's something is a double, yeah. like I'm it's still, me, this, this. And I'm still you know learning I mean? because I, I, I'm not, I've never been that big in hip hop. So I'm still learning what a bar is. Like I'm personally, I know y'all already caught on to that, but I'm still learning it. Like, yeah. Right. When you, like, cause Toe yeah. always like, that's a bar. And I'm like, what is, <laughs> but I'll, yeah, I'll, right. I'll, I'll laugh yeah. at her. Well, but I'm like, generally, yeah, cool. Generally something <laughs> like a bar is, is a, um, a complete, like, I would say almost like a complete sense, a complete thought kind of thing from start to finish complete thought uh that usually will end with a dramatic punchline you know something that really oh, punches so like you what like I that's like oh shit you know like um yeah so like uh like when when tom says you know you a vegan when the beat like he said a uh, ton of green beans you a vegan when the beef's real like that's a bar yeah well like what you i know? said what, in the break chat, that down for that me though a bar. okay what do you mean like so he said yeah so okay so you have the fact that like vegans don't eat meat right yes and so you're a vegan when the beef is real and it's like you're basically saying you're a pussy because like you don't want the smoke when the beef is real like it's all right. about that fakeness with you because you already know that like you're gonna get away with or it, you're you know only I mean? a or like you're only a vegan when the beef is real Right. Yeah. Like, so like, yeah, only, like, oh, I'm vegan because now there's beef involved. Yeah. So now I'm when, like, oh, when, you, when, this, when the beef, beef is real, you yeah. don't actually want to fuck with me. Yeah. You back away. If it was real, you wouldn't want to fuck with me. You know what I mean? You want the beef because, you know, yeah. 
you're pretending you okay. have the beef, but you really don't, you know? So it's like, um, yeah. try and think of another one. Um, or like, uh, you know, when he's uh, just like something I generally, I consider a bar, something that is stands out from the rest that generally is, um, just, it hits with a punchline that is like, makes you go, Oh shit. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. and like his, you know, uh, you know, pray to God that you can see throw got 11 inches for you, weak host. And that, that in itself was potentially referring to two different things at the time, you know, so it makes it seem like, and that's, and that goes back into like metaphors and stuff like that. But that's like, I'm just learning too. And I like, but now I'm trying to piece it all together. And, right. uh, you know, cause it's, it's like, it's fun and it makes it so much cooler and impactful when you really understand what they're trying to say. And that's where I struggle is because I'm not from that culture. You know, I didn't, I didn't live the same type of lifestyle. So a lot of hip hop and rap today, I don't relate to because that I, that's so, not, that's not a lifestyle I either have lived or ever lived or whatever. Now certain things with like drug use and stuff, I, you know, I've, so I've made my, my fair share of bad, mis you know, mistakes, but. So when Pro but, said, when we were listening to Prof earlier, and he made that orgy thing that was a that was a bar right like right yes yeah okay. yeah 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 so it's yes. like yeah <clears throat> you know but it's generally something that is you know it's well well rhymed you might have some like multi-syllable rhyming you have that major punchline. it definitely is some a bar that stands out from the rest you know that's generally but i mean a bar is <laughs> a, a bar is a bar and it's like how many lines you have in a song like a, a, a verse might be 24 bars and so like 24 sentences complete thoughts it might not even be a whole set it might be multiple sentences but it's like a complete thought is how i think of it right like because it's not just line by line it has to be the whole thought uh like yeah i don't know i don't even know if i'm okay. explaining it how i interpret it in my head i guess well, but i'm hoping somebody uh, in the, the okay. comments might be able to help us a little bit more yeah i think you're explaining it very well i think i have a better understanding of it yeah. yeah so it's generally sure. i would consider it to be because it's not i don't even want to just say like it's a sentence but it is a complete thought with impact that's what i'm going to say but all of the bars the bars are what make up the song uh but generally you have all the rhyme schemes within uh i don't know yeah so, but that's why i want to learn more about it because there's so many pieces to the puzzle well, i feel like i have some pieces put together in places but i'm missing all the other pieces and i'm still working on putting it together well, I think we should do one of these each week just to learn a little bit more each week. I think that should be. Oh, a definitely. I yeah. definitely want Ooh, to go pretty. down this rabbit hole. Hey, and the first is here. Yeah, we're, we're recording right now, baby. That's it. It looks cute. That fits her good. Sorry, guys. Aww. That's my yeah. daughter. She got a new dress. She had to come show me. That's firework. Love so. that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea. And um, and then maybe at some point, like as we're doing our education here, um, maybe we could get some of our uh, other reactor friends and do a whole segment with everybody, you know, that yeah, might understand that'd be a really little, cool. like educate ourselves a bit more and then like have them all come in, you know, and for, yeah. for yeah. Our, our follow up questions, you know, I think yeah. that that would be um, I think, very yeah. interesting to do in the next couple of weeks. I really think because I know that gimmick is gimmickless is really passionate about this. I think he would be excellent to be on for this stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to. So yeah. All right. Well, that was awesome. If you guys have anything that you could suggest down below, that would be uh, that would be great. And you know, explain in detail to Tova because she'll help break it down to us that are a little bit you know. <laughs> We're need a little a, slow need when it stuff. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, we need I'm, a little more layman's <laughs> terms. <laughs> I, my smarts are not with this stuff. <laughs> no, but that's elsewhere. what. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? It's always good to educate our minds, right? So to me, right, and this absolutely. is something that interests me personally. And if it wasn't, you know, and uh, deadheads well, are, if it's not something that's great interest of yours, and I'm kind of dragging you with me, but <laughs> actually, I, I was very, I was very interested. It, it it helps me. I like learning, so like. Yeah. <laughs> no well and if you think about it like nobody uh nobody's born smart like you i mean you have it you can be born with intelligence but you're not born smart you have to learn anything anything, anything you do, do yeah. anything and everything you do yeah so and the more and, you know the more you learn or the more you learn the more you know the more you know and the better I'm, you feel so eat beans for every meal i don't know and uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm strong on it i tell people all the time i am self-taught in everything i've ever learned so like everything you see i took the time to learn it myself like 
it's just yeah uh, right. I love learning. <laughs> yeah. So we are on well, perfect. the education journey. Well, I love it. And guys, until uh, until next time, peace out. Thanks, guys, for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified anytime the videos drop. Thanks. See ya.